uh, endocrine system. This is, uh, you know, we think about endocrine, you th people, many people think about uh, insulin, diabetes. Uh, it's definitely related to milk and cookies, but not uh, entirely. And so we'll talk about uh, what is the endocrine system, physiology and anatomy. Uh, talk about the disorders, some of the major ones, uh, most susceptible to intervention and modeling. And then we'll talk about uh, our hormone uh, replacement strategies and, and uh, how they might be uh, improved. Um, so the big idea with the endocrine system is it helps uh, in homeostasis over a range of different time scales. Um, and to do that, it needs to closely interact with the nervous system. The nervous system is assessing your environment, registering needs, opportunities, and it has to instruct the endocrine system on a number of things like how much energy do we need now? What sort of state do we need to be in? There are different complex behavioral states of high or low energy uh, that operate on very short time scales, fight or flight responses, and then there are longer time scale ones. Are we in a state of needing chronic high energy for the next few months? You know, that can be important too. But then of course there's also feedback from the endocrine system onto the nervous system. A lot of those adaptations, for example, do we need to be in an energy conservation state? Well, that's going to affect how the nervous system <laughs> operates. That might need to feed back and control behavioral uh, uh, adjustments to the situation. And so a, a very commonly uh, considered paradigm for how this works is uh, the state of glucose regulation in the blood. Now, uh, this is a multi-organ regulation. Uh, there is uh, Something that happens with every meal that you have more glucose uh, that is available. The pancreas then registers that. It can detect uh, the incoming uh, nature of the food. It has a, a very rich uh, system to detect elevated glucose uh, uh, in the GI tract uh, as well as in the bloodstream. And it secretes uh, insulin, a hormone which both acts on body tissues in general and on a specific uh, professional glucose regulator organ, the liver, and uh, insulin acts on those tissues to increase glucose uptake from the uh, blood. That decreases glucose and heads you back into the uh, correct uh, direction. Now there might be an overshoot or there might be uh, a fasting situation where blood glucose is dropping. That's also detected by the pancreas. Uh, there's a separate hormone uh, called glucagon which is then involved in triggering particularly the liver to release glucose and to carry out the metabolic steps that are needed to liberate glucose from a, a polymer in which it's commonly stored in the form of uh, glycogen. And that elevates uh, glucose back to homeostatic uh, levels. Blood glucose is pretty tightly regulated. Um, it's pretty important that it be tightly regulated. If it uh, gets too high, you get osmotic problems in the blood. It's an uh, osmol and it can create ion and water shifts that can be life-threatening. Uh, if, if it gets too low, the tissues don't have the energy they need, you can slip into somnolent uh, coma, seizure, and death. Now, that's an example. What is the endocrine system? Well, it's a million different things, little clusters of cells scattered all around the body. Some of them are not even as clustered as you'd like. Uh, there's uh, some real mysteries. So, for example, the thyroid gland has studied on it multiple parathyroid glands that are separate, okay? And really the thyroid and the parathyroid have essentially completely unrelated functions, and yet you have this parathyroid tissue embedded into the thyroid tissue. That creates big problems if you've got to take out the thyroid, if you've got a thyroid cancer, you've got this parathyroid tissue. Uh, that, that. Likewise, the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, do many different things, uh, regulating stress hormones, salt balance, and sex hormones. A single problem can cause completely uh, uh, different multifarious uh, uh, sets of symptoms. Uh, but they act via the bloodstream. They can be anywhere as long as they have access to the blood and they secrete their signaling molecule into the blood. And they, of course, get information from elsewhere. Uh, there is, at least to some extent, there is a, a gland which 
regulates the other glands, the pituitary uh, gland that is in the brain and is under very tight control from the hypothalamus, uh, which is uh, no part of the uh, neurons, and there's a direct neuronal glandular link between the hypothalamus. Uh, but all these other organs are, to one extent or another, under control of the of the pituitary. How does that work? Well, they even the pituitary has different parts. It's got an anterior and a posterior part, uh, and completely different functions are subserved by the anterior and posterior part. The posterior part is a little simpler, um, uh, but uh, in reality, they're both complex. And the other challenging thing is the different Cell types are completely intermixed, and so again, if you've got a cancer, as sometimes happens in the pituitary, and you've got to take it out, depending on which part you take out, you've got to do supplementation uh, of hormones for corresponding to the parts that are, are lost. Um, and a, a very common theme is that um, it's single hormone can have multiple effects. Uh, for example, uh, oxytocin both helps regulate uh, uh, lactation also uterine contractions, um, and other hormones uh, are simpler, but then you can have a situation where multiple separate hormones can act on a, a single given target. And for example, uh, the kidneys under control of uh, vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, this keeps water in, antidiuretic, <coughs> helps reduce the loss. <clears throat> of, of fluid from the body, but the uh, kidneys also uh, regulated by, among other hormones, aldosterone, which is coming from the adrenal, which in turn gets its control <coughs> from a hormone from the pituitary, and that regulates salt balance, which in turn affects water balance. We'll get back to kidney function in a later lecture. The point here is that each organ has multiple separate competing uh, hormones that are affecting it. Now. Uh, is there a big picture logic to it all? Could you model the entire endocrine system in some way, given all the feedback? Is it, is it, is it like a, a neural network in some way? If we knew what to measure, uh, uh, and if we knew which kinetic properties and which feedback properties were operative, we could indeed model it. And there are steps along the way toward that. Starting with a simple hormone, you can model Insulin concentration, the rate of change of insulin concentration as a function. You've got uh, absorptive uh, processes, you've got elimination processes. There's a first order rate constant of insulin elimination to a, a first order approximation uh, via the kidney. And so you can model this. This becomes particularly important thinking about insulin dosing in diabetes. There's a whole range of different insulin preparations that have different kinetics of uh, clearance and being able to model that. It's not a, <clears throat> a very simple uh, uh, set of equations. But actually, there's a, a neat site you can go and play around with. It's for educational purposes, but you can, it's a freeware program that you can uh, use to predict insulin treatment for insulin-dependent diabetes. It's, it's educational only, but uh, uh, analogous things are used to help uh, in the design of the different uh, long-acting versus short-acting uh, insulin preparations. And, Problem is, though, the models are still not good enough. You've always got to build in direct measurement of glucose level in the blood, which involves, in most cases, still uh, a finger stick. And so um, models are cool, but not predictive enough. And you've got all these different, one of the reasons that it's, they're not predictive enough is there's incredible complexity to uh, what happens to, to glucose and insulin. Both insulin and glucose are taken up and excreted or, or cleared by different uh, uh, organs, and this can change over time. Um, each other. Uh, and it's a very non-stationary process. This particular program, there's 16 separate equations that are solved by your You don't have to play around with it, but feel free to look at it if you're so that's the status. Even one hormone, incredibly complex. We don't have all the uh, information accurately uh, predicted. 